Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Jess, I'm the creator of Pink Rex, and today I wanted to go over my top 10 fastest growing rare plants. By rare plants, I don't necessarily mean expensive or collector by any means, I just mean plants that might be a little bit harder to come by or plants that you wouldn't necessarily see at Walmart or your local garden center. But if you are new here, I make videos about plants, video games, and lots, lots more. So if you like that kind of content and you haven't done this already, please offer to loan the like button your Razor scooter for the weekend, but super glue the wheels in place right before they pick it up. Also, please subscribe to the channel down below and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Okay, I have a handful of rare plants or uncommon plants that I keep that I definitely would say are significantly faster growing than most of my collection. So this list is just 10 of the plants that I would say generally are hard to find and grow faster than some other plants. <laughs> my number one plant on my list is actually one of my very favorite plants. It is my Philodendron Gigantium. That guy is in the corner behind me right here, right up in here, up in this corner area. I would say I have definitely noticed that over time it has grown significantly faster than pretty much any other plants I own at all, except for maybe my Monstera Deliciosa, but those are super common, so that's the only reason I don't have those on this list. Some of my main tips for keeping a Philodendron Gigantium happy is by making sure it gets some really bright indirect light. It does, I think, get just like a tiny, tiny little bit of direct afternoon sun, which isn't ideal. That might be the reason for the small amount of yellowing around one of the leaves on the bottom that it has, but I'm keeping an eye on it and the rest of the plant is absolutely thriving. So that's the only reason I haven't moved it. It also is growing up kind of a makeshift moss pole that it came on. It's really just some cocoa coir wrapped around a piece of PVC pipe which is fine. It is not latched onto the piece of pipe at all, so I'm going to be giving it a proper moss pole soon, but I would say a good amount of bright light, relatively infrequent watering. This plant will usually tell you when it wants water, or it'll look a little bit droopier than usual, and give it something to climb up, or at least stabilize it on something, like a stick or something, a bamboo post, I don't know. My number two uncommon plant that grows really fast is my Philodendron Painted Lady. I actually have three Philodendron Painted Ladies. Um, they are all quite small. This is the largest of the three and it has a baby. So does that count as four? Do I have four now? One of them is just pretty much still cutting. Oh, and this baby is having a baby. What? I'm so confusion. One thing I will specifically note about Painted Lady Philodendron is that it grows super fast as long as it has adequate light. It does need a little bit more light than other plants, it can handle some direct sun. I know mine definitely gets some indirect um, midday sun and then it does get some direct sun right at the end of the afternoon and it has been doing really well. It just had this new leaf open up, I think the day before yesterday and it has this kind of super unusual variegation to it <laughs> as well as having this really cute kind of little pink stem. And it has a pup, a little pup right there. So I think this one is definitely a must have for anybody who is into plants. Huh. For anybody who likes philodendrons. <laughs> the third plant on my list has got to be my Anthurium crystallinum. It is getting ready to drop this leaf. It has been through multiple bouts of trying to cure it from thrips and spider mites and mealybugs all at the same time, which is insane. I got this plant in a trade and I treated it right when I got it and I quarantined it and everything. And a couple days later I had looked and sure enough, it had a mealybug on the base. It had thrips all over the leaves and it definitely had spider mites underneath the leaves as well. So this was one plant that somebody brought to a trade, I think just to hand off a problem. When I got this plant, it was just these two smaller leaves and these two leaves have come out since it's been in my care. It also has a bunch of aerial roots. I don't know a whole lot about anthuriums if I'm being honest, but this one has been relatively easy compared to what I was expecting. I think I have been able to cure all of the pests that it had over the past couple months. It definitely had some leaves come up that I had to cut back and then retreat, but it is about to drop the two leaves that it had, I think, when I first got it, and it looks like it's about to have some new leaves start opening up here. It does have a whole bunch of growth points, so that's really exciting, but this one I would say is really fast growing as long as it has enough light and water. Obviously these guys are really picky about water. The next plant on my list is Raphidophora decursiva, which is also known as the dragon tail plant. And I don't, I don't think this needs any further explaining. <laughs> I've had this plant for roughly a year and I have cut it back several times. 
more than three that I can remember off the top of my head. And the only reason I keep cutting it back is because for a long time it wasn't getting enough light. So it has these runners coming out. And every time I've cut it back, it either has one leaf come out, which is the case with these three, or it has a runner and I just moved it. So I'm going to be, oh, I can't even see the runner. It's way up there. And whoop, that is the runner. So I am going to be chopping it back one more time, putting it on a proper moss pole and putting it in a spot that it gets some direct midday sun. And hopefully all of that will kind of help prevent runners and encourage more fenestrated leaves to come up and out. The only thing I'll note about Decursiva is that they can be kind of temperamental. So if they're not in a spot where they are happy, they will just wilt and look really sad. <laughs> they do need quite a bit of light to be a happy plant overall. Even now this one gets some, I would say a tiny bit of right away at midday, it gets a little bit of direct sun, but it needs a little bit more than that apparently because the runner thing is still happening. So we're gonna give it another go. But overall, I would say this plant grows insanely fast for what I was expecting. And I have had a really fun time watching it grow. I do recommend this plant. You just have to be willing to give it a little bit more light than a dark green plant would usually need. <laughs> the number five plant on my plant is Wait a minute, what? The number five plant on my list is going to be my philodendron Florida ghost. For a lot of people, I've heard that this plant can be kind of scary because it's hard to take care of. I have had a really great experience with it. Mine is under 12 hour cycled grow lights on a heat mat and it does get some midday direct sun. So it gets a lot of light and I do make sure to maintain moisture. It has a well draining soil with a lot of perlite, some orchid bark, charcoal, and some cocoa quark. Ooh, I'm gonna throw some on the table. Whoop. And that has done really well with keeping this thing happy. You don't wanna let it dry out, but if it gets too dry, it will definitely tell you by looking extra sad, just very extra sad. But I have chopped this one three times since I've had it. I got it when I first started getting into plants and I had its biggest chop back down to, looks like just having four leaves at one point. So that's kind of crazy. I didn't realize I cut it that much, holy cow but I cut it all the way down to just having four leaves when the stem was probably about as tall as the stick it's on right now. It's on just a bamboo chopstick I saved from sushi not that long ago. So keep your chopsticks. They're great for propping up your plants. <laughs> but this one grows and grows and tells you when it's thirsty and overall is just a really great plant. And also this plant has the coolest name of all of my plants, Florida Ghost. Are you kidding? I would say this is my second favorite plant that I own right now, aside from my Gigantium, which will always have the number one spot in my heart. I don't have a good way to do this, um, but the sixth plant on my list is Philodendron Pedatum. And Philodendron Pedatum is not the same as Florida... I don't... How can I... Hi! <laughs> it's me, your host, Jessica. Oh, oh no, I'm not trying to... No! Did I break it? Oh, I did break it. Yes, plant saved. I don't have a good way to do this, but this is my Philodendron Pedatum. <laughs> and as you can see, this thing is an absolute beast. I got this for 40% off at a garden sale at my favorite greenhouse pretty recently. Um, I would say just about a month and a half ago. And it has already grown a whole bunch. It's just hanging in my garage because I don't know what to do with it, but I wasn't gonna pass up on this great of a plant for 40% off, are you kidding? So one thing I would say about this plant, Philodendron pedatum is pretty hard to find. There is a very similar type of philodendron called Florida Green that's available through a lot of department stores right now. I know specifically I have seen it at Home Depot quite a few times. I've also seen it at Lowe's. Wow, this thing has a lot of spider mites right now. I need to clean it. Ah. <laughs> I am getting it out of here because it's not good to have with my other plants. It's just a reality of growing plants kind of half indoor and half outdoor is they will inevitably get spider mites every now and then. But Philodendron predatum looks an awful lot like Philodendron Florida Green. They're not quite the same. I know that the biggest way that I can find, at least online, the easiest way to tell Philodendron predatum and Philodendron Florida Green apart is aside from their overall adult form and leaf shape, if they're young, the leaves sheaths. Well, that's kind of hard to say, leaves sheaths. Huh, anyway, the sheaths on the leaves will be a creamish white color on the Philodendron predatum and they'll be kind of a purplish color on the Florida green, but don't quote me on that because I am not super sure. I could check, I have a Florida green, but I just touched a plant covered in spider mites, so 
not going to reach in my greenhouse cabinet right now. So correct me if I'm wrong on that. Let me know in the comments how you would tell them apart. I actually didn't know before today. So <laughs> the next fast growing rare plant on my list is going to be pretty much most forms of variegated Syngonium. I also have a Syngonium Three Kings, but it's really small right now because I cut it back for a trade not that long ago. But this is my Syngonium Albo. It has two stems. I got it from actually the same place I got the Podatum from. This one was not on sale though, so it was pretty expensive back when I bought it. I've had it for, I would say, roughly a year. And it has grown and grown and I've cut it back a handful of times. And it seems like even though this one is getting more and more common, people still really love it. And I understand why. I hadn't kept Syngoniums before this year, aside from I had a white butterfly that I grew up from one of those little pixie plants. But I would say they are super rewarding to grow, especially the variegated forms, because over time their variegation becomes more and more crazy. <laughs> at least in my experience with this one it has, because it started out being a little bit less variegated on this plant, at least on the larger one. This one started out with a half moon, but over time it has just gotten more and more beautiful. So cannot recommend it enough. Syngonium Albo or Syngonium Three Kings, fast growing, very pretty, 10 out of 10. The next plant on my list is gonna be my Monstera Stilepticana. Mine is still really stuck in its juvenile form because I haven't given it anything to climb. But these guys can get really big and cool and they have super cool venation in the leaves even in their juvenile form but it has a little area root started on every single node which is really impressive <laughs> for i would say any vining plants a lot of times they'll have it happen over time but this one it seems like the second a leaf comes out it also pushes out an area root and this thing i have had for a relatively short time and it has done nothing but show me love so i'm really excited to see how this one grows over time it has two main stems in this pot so I think I'm definitely going to put at least one of them on a moss pole and I might just leave the other one vining. I don't know. I kind of like the way it looks. This one is another one that I've heard can be kind of tricky for some people. I would say the only thing to pay attention to with this one over some other forms of Monstera is make sure that you're not letting it be too dry um, between waterings. It will get a little bit droopy and you know that that is the time to water it right away. Otherwise the leaves do start to crisp up a little bit. So that's the only thing I would say to keep an eye on. But overall I would say that this has been a very fun and easy plant for me to keep. So good stuff. I like it. The next plant on my list is going to be Philodendron Micans. This, I don't even have a full plant of a Micans. This is just a cutting that I've left in a test tube of water for way too long. This tube has two cuttings in it. it obviously it has the really long one, but it also has a smaller one. The smaller one started as just like one leaf and it now has, I think, seven <laughs> and a new one coming out. And this one started out as four leaves and you can see it is, it is quite a few more than four. I do recommend these. I'm excited to get these up on a moss pole and see how they do that way. I would really like to get some larger leaves. Unlike some other types of plants I've listed here that go up moss poles, I would like to mention that micans will never be fenestrated. So that is something to keep in mind if you are putting it on a moss pole for that purpose. It will get bigger leaves. It will be healthier and happier. It just won't ever be fenestrated, so. But I like that about this plant. I think it's got a really unique look with its velvety leaves. They come out this really cool red color, and over time, the sheath will fall off, and then the leaf will kind of slowly turn over to being a brownish green color, depending on the variety of micans that you have. There are a couple of different colors from what I understand, but overall, this has been a super cute little cutting to have, and I'm really excited to get it potted up and see how it does as a full-on potted plant situation. <laughs> The last plant on my list today is going to be any type of Alocasia dragon scale. This is Alocasia beginda dragon scale and this is Alocasia beginda silver dragon. This one has always been a little bit on the crispier side and I'm not super sure why, but it just opened up this cute little leaf I think yesterday and it fully finished opening this morning so I'm really excited about that. This one is a larger parent plant that I cut back because the leaves were just looking really crispy and I wasn't a fan. And after I cut it back, it actually had this little baby come up. So it's two plants in this pot. Overall, I would say that any type of alocasia is a really rewarding plant to keep, assuming you can keep it happy. But I've had multiple types of alocasias that did not do well for me. So it just kind of depends on the variety and it kind of depends on your situation. I think that these have really cool leaf venation. The undersides of the leaves have got to be one of my favorite things in the plant world right now. And I love seeing the little baby alocasias pop up and then separating them out and having even more. The only type of alocasia that I've never had that I really want to get is a fry deck. So hopefully those become available near me. I have started to see alocasia silver dragon pop up in places like Home Depot. I've only seen it one time where I came in and they actually had two of them on the shelf. 
So that's something to keep an eye out for. I think they're only $20 if you can get them that way right now. So definitely try to find them out there while they're hot. This regular Alocasia Dragon Scale, I actually haven't seen anywhere yet. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that. But Dragon Scale and Silver Dragon are really similar. It's just that this one I think has a little bit darker venation, darker leaves. This one has a nice silvery color to it, hence the name. I really love how bouncy their leaves are. Just like... <laughs> it brings me endless joy. <laughs> but that is going to do it for today, guys. That is my list of my top 10 fastest growing rare plants. I would say that there's definitely a lot more fast growing rare plants or collector plants that you can find. This is just the 10 I picked out for this list. Please let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite fast growing rare plants or even just a common plant that's fast growing. I do have another video that I will be putting up very soon of my top 10 fastest growing common plants as well. So keep an eye out for that if you'd like to, please. And if you got something out of today's video and you haven't done this already, please offer to loan the like button your Razor scooter for the weekend, but super glue the wheels in place right before they come pick it up. Also, please subscribe to the channel down below and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my other uploads. You can find me on other social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok under the username pinkrex with two X's, same as I am on here, same as I am everywhere. I have a lot of good plant content over on TikTok. Go take a peek. Let me know what you think, drop a comment, let me know if you came over there from YouTube. I feel like a lot of my YouTube followers are just people who are nice enough to follow me from over on TikTok, so if that is the case also, you could comment and let me know somewhere, anywhere. Comment, please. So whether I see you on one of the other platforms I just listed or down in the comment section below, just know I really appreciate you being here and I still have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> it just makes me really happy. <laughs>